Hi everybody, welcome back. This is part two of our Autumn Splendor album. And today we're gonna to continue working on the pages. I think I've arranged, uh, rearranged the layout a little bit. Um, but we've done this uh, front page. And then on the back of this front page, we did this flap. And we're gonna do this frame inside the flap. And then on this page, we're also gonna do a frame. Um, so that can wait because we need the background papers. Um, this I haven't decided on. This page here we're going to do something kind of special, which you will have seen already in the walkthrough, but I'm going to get back to that. Um, this page we're going to do today. This page we did last time with all the flaps and things. And then on the back page we're going to do that today. So we're going to do this page and this page today. So let me set this aside. And we're going to do this one first. And let me set these aside. Okay. And I'm going to need my scoreboard. I think. I think I already scored them, actually. Sorry. Grabbing my ruler. Okay. Um, again, you can consult your cutting guide for what you're going to need. So you're going to need four pieces. Four and three quarters by four and one quarter. Uh, place the four and three quarter side along the top of your scoreboard and score it a half inch for all four of those. And then you are going to need a square five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So this is loosely based on the pinwheel waterfall that I like to do a lot. Um, and I had one of my viewers suggest in the comments that I should make it on the base the way I do my regular waterfalls and then put it in the book. Usually I build it directly in the book. Um, and I thought that was a good idea. Uh, this is not actually ex exactly like the pinwheels that I make inside the books, but it's a variation. Um, so then I am just putting score tape. on each of these tabs. Again, you can use glue. I meant to put this tape on before we started, but I forgot. And even though I do like to use glue for most of my construction, um, I, I use tape in the videos because it's faster. Um, I do like to use tape for waterfalls just because it's so easy to make a mistake and put it down wrong. And if you use tape, you can get it back up and fix it. Okay. And I'm just burnishing my tape down, which is important when you're using double-sided tape does need to be burnished. And I think I'm going to go ahead and round the corners on these. Maybe. Let me think about that. Usually I do on these. The way this is going to work is this is going to go here, and then these are going to be overlapping each other here. So it's not a true pinwheel like I usually make. I have to decide if I want it, want it to have those rounded corners or not. I think I do. Okay, little ones. I'm gonna do quarter round. So quarter inch um, on my crocodile. This is more for wearability than it is for looks. If I was going for looks, I'd probably have used a half inch. But I just feel like something that gets handled a lot like this, flipping it open and closed. The corners are just going to wear better if they're rounded. Okay, let's get this out of the way. So here's our P 
piece. All right, now I'm just lining up my ruler and you can see it's... Um, so when you center this piece, it's got, it should have a half inch on either side. Give or take, let me see, half inch, half inch. So what I think I'm going to do, well, I don't really want to make a mark because it might be visible. So I'm just going to use the ruler. And if you have a clear ruler, now would be a good time to get it out. And I do, but I think I'm just going to use my regular blue ruler. So I'm just lining up the edge of my paper. Actually, no, I'm going to do this upside down. Just so I can see it. All right, so I'm putting one of the one inch marks right at the edge of my paper. And then I am lining up the edge of my flap oops, with that mark or that mark on the ruler and you don't have to be like scientifically accurately correct here but you know you want it to be pretty good okay just like that and open that one up and just repeat and what i should have done and what i will do with the next one is i'm only going to remove I had an interruption. I record on my phone and somehow calls get through even when I'm recording sometimes. Okay, anyway, so what I was saying, um, and I don't know if you saw it, is I'm only peeling back part of the tape, which is what I should have done with the first one, but wasn't paying attention. And again, I'm just lining that up with the half inch mark on my ruler. And just repeat that for all four of these. Okay. All right, so we have, let's say, you can do it in any order you like, but there you go. Okay. And then we have to decide how we're going to close this. And what I'd like to do, I have, there's two options. You can use a magnet. Um, actually, three options. You can use a magnet problem with using a magnet is you're going through an awful lot of layers because you're going to have a mat, a cardstock, a mat, mat, cardstock, mat, mat, cardstock, mat. I mean, you're going through like 12 layers before between the magnets. So, and that can work if you've got, you know, good, powerful magnets. Um, another option you can do is to use a couple of magnets uh, on the base and then use a separate piece like a um, a cut apart or a piece of ephemera or something like that I'll just grab this with magnets on it and just stick it down and those two things sandwich the flaps and hold them closed and I've done that before uh, the other option and the one I think I'm going to go with is when you place this down on the page put um, some seam binding behind it and tie it in a ribbon, in a bow, or however you want to tie it. And that's the option that I'm going to go with. So let me, I'm trying to, I don't want to lose track of which pages are going where. All right. Before I glue that down, well, I can't really glue it down until I've picked the, the mats anyway. So let me just go ahead and add in there. All right, so we have one, two, don't know what's going there. This is going to go here, and I got another phone call. Oh, so annoying. Okay, I probably should invest in a camera one of these days. Okay, so I'm just rearranging my pages to make sure I know where that's going, and that is going there which is opposite this page. So that's page six. This is page seven, which we already made. And now we're gonna do page eight, which is the back of this page. Now, when we're doing this page, we need to be careful because there is a top and a bottom. So we just wanna make sure this page actually can go like either way. 
Um, but once you've put in what we're about to do, then there becomes a top and a bottom. So I'm just double checking. All right, so this is gonna become the top. It's, it doesn't really matter. Um, like I said, it's just once this is in, so just for my own little edification, I'm putting that there. All right, so what we need for this is three pieces. You need one piece six and a half by nine. You need a square that is seven by seven, cut in half diagonally, giving you two more pieces. The triangles, you want to score the two straight edges at a half inch and leave the diagonal edge alone. So let me go ahead and score this one. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so just lay your two short ed uh, straight edges in your, oh, not with that. Oh, that would cause some damage. Okay. I got one of those new um, bone folders that's shaped like a pencil. Yes, I fell into the, the trend. Seems like it's very popular right now, so I ordered myself one. I'll let you know what I think. It hasn't come yet. Okay. So, easy to do. And what we're making here, just so you know, is we're going to take this large piece, score both short ends, one long edge. We're making a big pocket. And scissors. And then on top of that pocket, we're going to put two diagonal pockets. I like them, and I haven't done one in a while. I don't know why. trim the corners, but that's okay. This is 3 8 inch score tape that I'm using. Again, you can use um, art glitter glue if you like. It's kind of a combination of personal choice and what works best in your um, environment. Adhesives behave differently in different environments. Right, and as long as we're taping, let's go ahead and tape these as well. And you definitely do not need to go um, all the way to the end of that point because it's good, definitely going to be trimmed off. so I can see my score lines better. And you want to cut this corner more steeply than you normally would. Okay, so there's 
one of our pockets. Essentially with these corners what you're doing is like if this is straight this way you're going to cut them at 90 degrees to that and that should give you a pretty good match here. Nobody's ever going to see it. It's not a big deal if it's not. Oops, I turned that wrong way. Uh, nobody's ever going to see it. It's not a big deal. But if you just cut it the way I normally cut my pockets it would stick out above the top and you don't want that. trim that one just a hair more. There we go. I just want it down a little bit from that top edge. Okay, so there's that. piece to it. There we go. Now we're going to put this pocket on the bottom. I should have dry fit this. Make sure it fit. It's a, it is a little bit big. And my bad. Remember, I've, I'm always telling you to dry fit and I forgot. So I am just going to rescore this side. Just like an eighth of an inch. lesson there and make sure that you dry fit first and then I'm just gonna trim that a little bit away okay there we go perfect a lot of bulk in the seam here so if you need to adjust this slightly from one side to the other to fit you want it more to the right so that you have less bulk here where the hinge is going to be Very large pocket. Burnish. And now we're going to do these triangle pockets, which are going to go here, right on top of this pocket, and then one on the other side. Okay. And if you've had to fudge anything or anything slightly off, this pocket here is going to hide that. Not that that ever happens, but. <coughs> Okay. There okay. we go. And again, we're just going to line this up at the bottom and the side. Good. 
it. Just like that. Okay, and then this one is going there. large back pocket and then we have this pocket and this pocket okay all right so that is that that is the base of most of the pages and we're going to stop here and when we come back next time we are going to begin matting um, and doing some of the things that uh, we couldn't do until we got base pages down and maybe start on our little scene page. Um, we'll see how we, where we get. But anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget to get the uh, measuring guide for this, the cutting guide, which is on my blog, and I will look it down below. And I will see you next time, and we'll continue with this Autumn Splendor album. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you've already subscribed. Thank you so much. Uh, like, share, all those other fun things to support the channel. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.